Hi, in this video I'm going to go over the DAX function calculate. And this is the function that is used in PowerPivot. So what this function does is it evaluates an expression in context that is modified by a specific filter. And that's a lot of big words. But basically what it does is if you're familiar with something like sum if, think of calculate as something that can evaluate a measure based on any other calculation, not just sum, not just average, not just count. So if you think of calculate as a calculate if, you're probably going down the right track. So when we use the syntax for calculate, we have our calculate name and then the expression, which could be any measure, such as total transactions or the sum of transaction quantity. And we have our filters. So we can put many filters on there. So some examples of filters are, let's say you want to say the calendar year equals 2008 or the transaction quantity is less than or greater than 100. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how we can use it. So in our example, we're going to have these two tables. We, ha we have a calendar table and this has our date and we're going to take the year out of that, the month number, January, the month name, which quarter it's in, which week of year it's in, week of month, day, day of week, and then the day name. So this is a basic calendar table. And we have our data table. These are transactions. And in this particular example, we have a date. We have a quantity. These are movies. This is, is a movie title. This is a genre. It's a crime, mystery, or comedy. And what we need to do with these two tables is relate it together. We have to define some relationships between these two tables. And the, the the relationship is going to be based on the date. So the, the date that is coming off of the data table, which is our movie database, and their calendar table, which has a date. So you can see if, if I hover back up here, the common fields are the date here from the data table and the date here from the calendar table. So I have my data table here and my calendar table here. Right. And so an example of, of how the calculate function works. So this is an example of how the calculate function could work. So if we think about previously what I said about the calculate function, think of it as a super duper sum ifs function or average, average ifs function. We're going to calculate some measure if it fits some criteria, some filter. So in this example, in this particular field, I added something extra where if the date is either a Saturday or a Sunday, it's going to define it as a weekend. So if it's a Saturday or Sunday, it's yes. If it's not, it's a no. And in this particular example, uh, what was created, and I'll go over this when I do the example uh, step by step, we have a total quantity and a weekend quantity of the amounts of the videos that were sold, right? So in this particular pivot, we see here that the weekend quantity is a little over 5 million. So in this example, it kind of highlights this particular box. What it's saying is the calculate function modifies filters in a pivot table and overrules any competing ones. So when you put the an object into the row or the column, it's basically a filter, right? So we put the weekend object, which is here in this particular table in the calendar table if we put it into the rows field it essentially is a filter so n says no it's not a weekend but you can see here we have our total quantity which is coming from the data table so it's adding up all of this together and we have our total quantity here and you notice that in this particular pivot table, if it says no, that filter says no, our total quantity is this amount. If it's yes, our total quantity is this amount. This field, this weekend quantity field, is actually the calculate function in action. You can see here it stays the same no matter if it's a no or a yes. This particular measure is just looking at the weekend quantity and you see that it matches that, right? It says yes. This is a weekend, it matches that. And even though we have a no here in this row, 
it overrides that. And this is the one of the key concepts of understanding the calculate function. It over, overrides or overrules competing filters, right? So this is no. We really have our total quantity at this amount, but the weakened quantity is this amount. Let's see how this gets done. I'm going to copy this data. Control A, Control C to copy, and open a, another worksheet. Paste as values. This is going to be the data. I'll call this data. And have new worksheet. This for the calendar. I'll just type calendar here to name that tab. Let's go back into my other worksheet and copy this calendar. Control A twice. Control C to copy. Go to my new worksheet. Paste it as values. I got my values here. Let's change this date to a uh, short date. I'm going to do the same for the data tab here. Short date. And I need to bring these into the data model. So I have Power Pivot here, this Power Pivot tab. Incidentally, this is in Excel 2016. So Power Pivot is already included in it. If you have previous versions of Excel, you might need to download it from Microsoft and install it. But since this is 2016, it's included. Go to Power Pivot, add this to the data model. It's going to bring up the Power Pivot window and is going to add it into the data model. Oh, first, it's going to turn it into a table. So uh, it's going to turn this range of data into a table. My table does have headers. Click OK. And now it's going to bring it into the data model. I need to do the same thing for the calendar data. So you can see this is table one. Let's just call this data. Press enter. Do the same thing for calendar. I'm going to close this. And go into the calendar tab. And go to power pivot. Add to data model. My table does have headers, which means the first row or header fields. Click OK. And now it's going to bring it in. I need to call this calendar. Press enter. And what I need to do is create a relationship between data table and calendar table. In the power pivot window, go into diagram view. And all I need to do is just pull this date into this date. And it's going to create a relationship between this table and this table. It's a one to many relationship. You can see the one is on this side of the calendar and there's many here because this date is unique. The date field in this particular table could have um, rep duplicate values because the sales for the movies, for different movies could occur on the same date. Okay, but this particular date here is going to be unique because this is a calendar table. Now, in this particular table, let me go back to the data view. I need to create a column that will show me if the day name is either a Sunday or a Saturday. It is a weekend. So what I'm going to do is create a calculated column. I'm going to type equal. You can see equal up here. I'm going to use a function called switch. Press tab to complete it. And for switch, I use another function called true close parentheses here and basically what this is going to do is it's going to it's almost like a super powered if statement so it's going to say if this is true if these values are true then bring back the result this is what the true statement is saying so I'm going to say if this value equals Sunday then bring back yes why also my second value if this value equals Saturday comma, bring back y. And anything else, this is that else statement here, just type no, n for no. Close parentheses, press enter. And this is our, calc our calculated column, which is going to determine if this is a weekend or not. I'll title this, double click that, weekend, and I'll just put question mark. So now this table is complete. Because we have our weekend field that we opened up, 
and we have our relationships between the calendar and date. Now I can go in and use the calculate function. Close this. Whoops. Maybe I need to, to do something there. Let's bring it back up. Power pivot. Let me manage the data model. So I'm going to create a pivot table. Go to pivot table and I'll do a new worksheet and let's bring in our so I can go ahead and put a quantity. Whoops, table two is not the table one. Table one is where we have our data. I can put in the quantity here and it will list out the quantity. And this is called an implicit measure, which basically says, let Excel do the work of summing up the quantity. In Power Pivot, it's probably a good idea to create what we would call explicit measures, where we are kind of doing the same thing. We, we want to sum up the quantity. So what I'm going to do is create a measure. Go up to measure here and say new measure. I'm going to create this measure under the data table, right? So I'm under the data table and I'll call this total, total quantity. And basically what this is is just the sum. This is the sum of the quantities. If I type sum, we have our sum of quantities. So I want to sum up this quantity. Double click that. Check the formula. There's no errors. The no I want to make it a number and it will be a whole number. And I'll use the thousand separator. So we'll separate thousand. It makes it easier to read. Click OK. And now we have this total quantity field. You'll notice that Excel pulled this down here to total quantity. I, if I remove it, see it disappears. Let me move it down here and you'll see that it's the exact same thing here minus the uh, the uh, thousand separator, the comma for the thousand separator. It's the same thing, right? So we have our total quantity here and what I want to do now is create a calculate function. So we're getting down to the meat of the calculate function. So let's take a look at the weekend field that we created in the calendar table. I'm going to bring this in as a row field and you'll see that we have our weekends here and here and things that are not weekends are here and here. Ideally, we don't want to have a row field. Let, let me make this a little easier to read. Go to design, report layout, and show in tabular format. For the most part, it's probably not as easy or flexible if we always need to bring in that weekend field as a row um, to, for a filter. It would be nice to have something where we have a weekend quantity in our values field so we don't always have to bring in this weekend as a rows field. So what I'm going to do is create a calculated measure using the calculate function. Go under power pivot, measures, new measure, and we want to have this under the data table which has our quantity. I'll call this weekend quantity. And this is where we're going to use the calculate function. So we're going to calculate, double click that. We want to calculate the we want to calculate the total quantity. So I'll just type total and we have our sum total quantity, which is that. Double click that. And we want to calculate the filter. So basically that weekend filter that we created for the calendar table. I think we called that weekend W E question mark. Weekend question mark. So we'll double click that and close parentheses. This is going to be a number and this will be a whole number. Use the separator function. Click OK. And now we have, let's see, could not calculate weekend quantity to the pivot table because the formula is invalid. Let's see what happened. We'll take off our sum of quantity because this was the Im implicit measure. Take that out. We have our explicit measure. This is the one that we created. Let's bring the weekend quantity down here. And it says the error message. It cannot convert value Y to type true or false. Click OK. Let's edit this measure. Probably something I forgot. Right click, edit measure. Ah, right. So we had, we needed to do something here, right? We, we for, I forgot to add a condition, right? So 
because this weekend measure, it either was a Y or N, yes or no. So I need to type equal and Y. That tells me, or it tells Excel, we want calendar weekend to equal Y because there's two values, either Y or N. Now close parentheses, click OK, and now no error messages. I'm going to bring this down to the values field, and now we have our weekend quantity. We don't really need this weekend anymore in the rows field because this, we just, all we care about are the weekend values. So I'm going to take this out. So our calculate function has given us the value for the weekends. Now I can bring in genre to the rows. I don't need to bring in this weekend, this weekend thing to the rows because now I can look and analyze okay what's my total quantity but also what's my weekend quantity and it gives me a good idea of further analysis we have all our movie genres and they look pretty normal I guess for total quantity but for weekend quantity we can say oh look dramas they, there seem to be a lot of sales for movies that fit the drama genre there's like over a million uh, quantity of movies sold. So that kind of gives us an idea for further analysis. So this is highlighting a useful example of what the calculate function does because it essentially performs a if statement. So I want you to calculate a measure if, if it fits certain criteria. If it, In this case, it fits the criteria if movies were sold on the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. Instead of putting the, the weekend values in the rows field, you can put it into the values field and you can do further calculations on it. So the calculate function is a pretty powerful feature when you really think about it and it gives you the capability to do some pretty powerful filtering on the pivot tables. So that's an example of the calculate function. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.